Today, I want to share with you a question whose answer I don't really know. It is based on the following theorem that we do have a complete and connected metric space that is h1 sigma finite. That means h x is x is a countable union of its subsets, each of which has finite h1 measure, has store form measure. But for any other metric that you put on X, as long as it gives the same topology, that is the identity map, the topology coming from D and the topology coming from D prime are homeomorphic, we have that H1 measure is still infinite. Um, the, the, I will give a, the example which is the proof of this theorem in a second after I pose my question. But here's the thing. For example, if you take a line, then it is H1 sigma finite because it's union of such pieces of it. Each one is being a finite H1 measure. So the whole line is an H1 sigma finite complete and connected metric space. But notice that you can homeomorph a full line into a line segment of uh, unit length. So the whole R1 is homeomorphic to this and uh, you can pull back the distance function here onto the previous, onto the original space. So instead of doing this homeomorphism you can say that now I'm measuring the distances of two points whatever their distance under this homeomorphism will become. So uh, let's say the X prime and Y prime are, are the images under that homeomorphism. So this new metric D prime of X, Y will be Euclidean distance of X prime minus Y prime. So this is a homeomorphism. This change of distance doesn't change topology, but obviously now this image, homeomorphic image of X has ended up with a finite measure. So now in the new distance D prime, this ends up having finite measure. So I will use this notation uh, up here to distinguish with respect to which metric I'm computing the Hausdorff measure. I don't put down here because it can run into this approximating Hausdorff measures, the, the pre-measure that we built before taking limit. So there does exist R1, just taking a line is not as an, an example of such space, but there does exist a metric space that is truly H1 sigma finite. You cannot turn it into finite measure space uh, as long as you keep the same topology. So I will again uh, draw a picture of an example of such space. But my question now is, the one that I don't know the answer to, is does there exist a metric space that is truly H2 infinite measure um, that is under all homeomorphic changes of the distance, you end up having infinite H2 measure. So again, R2 won't work because all of R2 is just homeomorphic to the unit disk in R2, which obviously has finite H2 measure. So when, whenever you have a homeomorphism into another space, of course, you can pull back the metric. Um, these examples can be phrased instead of saying changing the metric in in the space X, you can say if X embeds into a, another bigger metric space, so there's a copy of it there, and you can pull back the metric on Y into X. So they can also be phrased in terms of embeddings. For In that theorem example, um, this also shows that you cannot embed that space into any uh, metric space with finite H1 because if it embedded homeomorphically, in this case, when I say embed it homeomorphically, if it did embed homeomorphically into a subset of a space with finite H1, then of course um, that metric pulled back would contradict the theorem. So what is my example? The example or proof of theorem. Um, 
I will put a link to the original video I did on this uh, example in summer and uh, it came as a out of curiosity I was looking at a proof that we did in a paper and uh, I was trying to see how the proof really works so I ended up with this um, example so you have this say equation of y equal 1 over x in R2 so it is really just a subset of R2 and then at all integer so at all values of n belonging to the z um, wait I don't have to specify that so at 1 at 2 and so on so I will place these hanging bars so let's say I will go to one two three four you can end actually here at some point um, this side doesn't have to go to infinity it's the other side that will become interesting so let's say you truncate it at six um, but then this side you will place points at uh, one half you will place another bar at one third and then all of these lines you will add up uh, this will be there so rather I should say this way so you put a bar at every 1 over n and also you add so this shoots up to the infinity you also add the y-axis okay so that this becomes now a connected space although it's not path connected and that's actually a big part of this um, you cannot separate by open sets, although you cannot really connect any point on this end to any point on the y-axis because that, that connection only happens at infinity, which is not actually part of your space. So this is a subset of R2. Um, you can prove that this space X with the Euclidean metric and topology on it is not cannot be written in the following form so this space this picture I have this subset of R2 cannot be written as x equal union of xi where these are increasing chain of okay connected and compact so xi so this space is closed but obviously not compact um, however more is true that you cannot even write it as a chain as an increasing chain of connected and compact sets so what does this have to do with the proof of that theorem um, you have to combine these two together to see that this space is an example proving the existence of the space with that property the theorem is saying that if you have any metric space xd with um, so connected and let's have complete just to be safe if xd is connected and complete with finite h1 then x is indeed union of a chain of is a union of these xi where each xi is compact and connected so on the one hand we have this fact which is very unique for the one dimensional uh, Hausdorff measure and that's part of the difficulty why you cannot easily generalize the example to the case of H2 so this very special theorem about H1 it's quite well known among the experts so if you have just finite H1 measure that kind of um, forces a strong topological property on the space and because and this one is very easy to do it's a simple calculus exercise so if you um, have this fact and this theorem then that means this a, this 
h1 of this space is not uh, finite, which is obvious, of course, from the calculation of the length. But remember that if you homeomorphically change x, this property that whether a space can be written that way is a purely topological property. So if in one topology you can write x as this way, then in any other homeomorphic topology you can do that the same. Um, therefore, this prop property won't change. Therefore, if you homeomorphically change the distance, uh, this cannot all of a sudden turn from infinite to finite. Um, so, so here, h1, let me write that. So obviously, h1 of this space is infinite. But again, because of this homeomorphic invariance of that property, h1 with respect to any other distance which doesn't change the topology will still be infinite okay so back to my question can you do a two-dimensional version of this can you find a metric space that is truly infinite hausdorff to measure uh, under all metrics within the same homeomorphism class. Uh, something I have tried and but I haven't been able to uh, really calculate to the end is will you turn in each of these uh, hanging bars into a hanging wall. So you start with this wall and then you place. So also your uh, slide obviously is uh, your line has become a full slide of dimension two, so it runs this way, right? It runs this way. So you're placing these walls there. Now, either you start with guessing that, okay, I can turn this into a version under a homeomorphism into one with H2 of X finite. So the, the one path of doing it is, okay, you change your metric near here and you kind of pinch these walls so that each wall successively ends up having less and less volume so let's say each wall ends up having a volume of one over n squared so their summation will be finite but then you run into this issue of um, the last wall the last wall which is sitting at the origin um, it's not touching the slides really only at infinity this wall then will have to really have area zero and does that mean that it has been crushed into a line for example which then changes the homeomorphism remember that any two walls of any width you can even like uh, just pinch at both ends so that you end up with something like this so these areas become very small that doesn't change the home homeomorphism but if you crush a whole wall into one line then definitely topology has changed for example you can see that if you remove one point here then this becomes a disconnected space removing any one point from a plane doesn't make it disconnected so i don't know really please uh, uh share your thoughts and your example what you tried uh, maybe even questions for clarification if you have them in the comments and uh, let's see if we can together find uh, an example or prove otherwise that such a space does not exist. That will be quite interesting. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this example. Again, I will put a, a link to the original video where I went in uh, more depth discussing this hanging bars example.